Hello. Welcome. Welcome to today's uh, fun and free painting. We are doing the dancing sheet today. And so as you hop on, say hi. Let me know you're watching um, and where you're watching from. I love seeing uh, how far our videos go and where it reaches and all of that. So let me know where you're watching from. And I'm going live a little bit early because I have a couple things that I want to mention before we get started painting. And one of them is we have a virtual paint party coming up. Um, it's April 15th. It's a Thursday at 7 and it's a paid virtual paint party. We are doing the lemon welcome door sign. Let me grab it. So let me get it right here. So this is a 18 inch round sign and we are doing a virtual paint party, like I said, for this. And so there's a couple ways that you can join. Um, uh, we have one way um, is a viewer ticket. So maybe you have all the supplies, you have the ability to purchase your own round. Maybe you just want to paint it on um, a canvas, uh, whatever that may be. You just want to learn how to paint it. And so that's our viewer option and that's $7. We also have a uh, one step up from that. So let me back up. With the viewer option, you get um, access to our private Facebook group where we'll go live in the group and paint this together. It will be recorded, so if you miss it or can't make the time that is um, scheduled, you can catch it on the replay. Um, you also, as a viewer, get the supply list that I'm going to be using, um, the paint colors and things like that, but don't stress about that. Whatever colors you want to use would be fine. Um, your yellows, your greens, things like that, right? Um, and then you'll also get the tracer for that that you can print out and use on your own surface. Okay, so that's the base. That's viewer. Um, the next step up from that, you get everything included with the viewer, but then you purchase just maybe the, uh, not maybe, you purchase the door blank. So this will come with just the, the wood blank. You get the tracer and you get the supply list, so um, then you would purchase the paint and ribbon for it if you wanted to. Um, you, you have brushes maybe, so um, you're just looking to get the blank. And then that also gives you rights to the Facebook group and the tutorial and everything um, that the viewer gets. Um, and then there's one step up from that, um, and it's the complete kit. So the complete kit gets everything the viewer gets. It gets the wood blank and paint and brushes. It will have the tracer, it will have um, the supply list, um, and it also comes with ribbon. So the complete kit comes with everything to make this from start to finish. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned, but the uh, wood blank kit, just to get the wood blank, is $12.99 and then the complete kit is um, $34.99. Um, and we'll start shipping those out next week so that uh, if you are getting the kit that it will get to you before the paint party uh, that is scheduled for April um, 15th. Um, we only have a limited amount of kits so if you're interested in that make sure to order soon and you want to make sure that we can get it shipped to you in a timely manner so that you can participate on that date. Now, if you sign up a little bit later, um, like I said, the tutorial will be recorded. So if you do want a kit and it's closer to the time of the party and we still have some available, I'll still ship it to you and you can catch it on the replay um, at your convenience too. So. Um, I just wanted to um, mention that this sign is so pretty. The colors are amazing. It's this yellow and then, let's see if I can get it close here. 
We've got a green leaf and then this really pretty Tuscan teal leaf. And I think those three colors together just make such a great statement piece. It's bright um, and the little blue in there just really makes that yellow pop. So um, that's available. Uh, there is an event in our Facebook page, so if you are interested in, go to the event, and in the description is a link to my website that you can get your tickets to sign up for. So that's one thing I wanted to mention, and then before I go any further, I forgot to check and make sure everything looks okay, so let me just see. Okay does look like I have volume. You guys, I'm getting better at this. Volume used to be my nemesis on videos. It seemed every time I got connected, um, my mic would be on or off or all sorts of things. I think I finally figured it out. So let me check comments here too. Pull up comments. We've got Dorothy from Florida. Awesome. Julie from Johnson. Moonshine Acres Johnson MN. Is that Minnesota? I'm going to guess there. Katie from Montana, just right around the corner from me. Hi, Katie. And we have Julie and Sarah. Welcome, welcome. So, anyways, I just wanted to uh, visit with you a little bit about that, give you a little more information about the door hanger. Next week, I'm going to show you how um, to join us maybe you want to paint this but you don't have access to a wood door hanger or whatever that may be i've got some other options for you so tune in next week for that okay so and then one other thing um if you didn't know let me let me introduce myself to anybody who's new <laughs> i always get ahead of myself as well uh, my name is Bertie Larson and I'm the owner of Redbird Designs and I also have uh, two memberships. Uh, we have Redbird Retreat which is our online painting membership and I only open it a couple times a year so you might not know too much about it because I don't uh, advertise and market it as much once we open, we, we are gung-ho about marketing and then I close the cart and focus solely on my members and creating content for them within the group. Um, and so you might not have heard me say it, but it is um, Redbird Retreat. It's our online membership. And that is actually opening up May 1st through the 7th. So head over to my website, redbirdretreat.com or redbirddesign.com. You'll find the Redbird Retreat link check it out if you're interested in diving deeper into painting um, learning how to paint if you're just getting started if you're if you've been painting for a while and you're looking for a community of women to join and share your journey with if you're looking for inspiration uh, this membership is for you so go get on the wait list uh, so that you are notified when that is available again it's on our website redbirddesign.com there's Redbird Retreat along the top, you can't miss it. It's in the menu if you're on a mobile device. Um, so I just wanted to just touch base um, and mention that because it is coming up and we are actually, um, it will be our one year anniversary. So uh, get ready for lots of fun, to, lots of fun coming up uh, revolving that during um, the end of April and beginning of May. So. All right, so with that being said, let's get into painting this super cute little sheep, um, the dancing sheep. And let me change you over to the overhead camera. All right, so today we're painting this guy here and so fun and so cute. And if you're able to join, um, let me know if you're painting along let me know if you have any questions at all while we're painting please don't hesitate to drop them in the comment I would love to help you out um, or if you're struggling or whatever that may be I want to see you be successful as well so uh, make sure to 
don't be afraid to ask questions is what I'm trying to say here. Okay. So I'm also going to drop a link in the comments real quick here before I forget. So if you are not painting along but would like to at a later time or you're catching this on the replay and would like to paint along, um, I have a free supply list and tracer for you. So that is in the comments now. Um, it's Redbird, it's right on my website, free download. Um, I have a whole page of all of the fun and free uh, paintings that we've done since the beginning of the year. So go ahead and pick out as many as you want. There's no limit. Um, you just choose the one you want, you hit download, put your email in, and we will email you, or my website does, I should say. <laughs> Um, we'll email you a zip file, which then you unzip. It comes with three PDFs, one PDF for the supply list, and then one for the top portion of the tracer and one for the bottom portion of the tracer. So feel free to go grab those. Like I said, grab as many as you want. Um, if you wanna catch older fun and free paintings, we do have a album in our videos. So if you are looking on our Facebook page, they are in the videos tab. There's an album called Fun and Free and we are organizing them all there. So you can go back and watch as many as you want. Julie is painting a long spring break fun for me. Awesome, yay Julie, Minnesota, that was, I got it right, <laughs> yay. Was there a template? Sarah, yes, I just saw your comment. Yes, the template's on my website. I just put a link there for it. Okay. All right, so I think I've got all of the housekeeping part of it taken care of. Let's get into some painting. And actually, give me just a second. I'm gonna, it's kind of cloudy here. And let's see if I can reach my light ring. Just shine a little bit of light on here. There we go. All right, excuse my reach. I think that's a little bit better. We got some brightness going on here. Okay, so we'll put this off to the side. Let's talk about what you're going to need. We have, here's the tracer. Like I said, a top part and a bottom part. Um, you'll line them up and then tape them together to create this size. We are printing, or painting on 11 by 14 today. So I've already put my pieces together, I've taped it down where I want it to go, and then we take our transfer paper. Um, there are two sides to a transfer taper. You've got your dull side transfer paper. Did I say taper? <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied. Um, two sides to the paper. There's the dull side and then the shiny side. And the shiny side is what you want to have down on your surface. So you're gonna slide this in between your tracer and your surface. Then you're gonna take the pencil and just outline everything that you see on the tracer, which I've already done ahead of time. Um, one thing that I do want to mention as well is if you do not have graphite paper or transfer paper, no big deal. You can create your own using a pencil, turn your tracer over, you can see the image come through on the back side, and then you're just going to take your pencil and create your own transfer paper. So if I just quickly rub my pencil using the side here to get as much area covered as possible. I can just quickly go over the areas that need to be traced. So you don't have to do the whole thing, right? Um, and then when we turn this back over and trace it, this graphite that we've applied to the back here then becomes our transfer. So no need to go out and get transfer paper if you don't want to. Okay, uh, colors that I'm using today, I've got my black and white. It's 
pretty standard. I pretty much use those in every painting I have, right? We've got, um, I'm using a parrot blue today, but in my supply list, I talk about using a Caroline blue, which I had run out of, and this will work just fine. It's just a light color blue for the sky. Um, I also have listed this territorial beige, and I use it very sparingly in the face just to tone down the face so it's not so black. I have a Hauser Medium Green in the Deco Art Americana brand and that is for the leaves on the floral crown here. And then for my flowers, I've got a Deco Art Razzleberry, a Honeysuckle Pink from Apple Barrel, a coral blush from uh, the Americana brand and then just a yellow a bright yellow and I'm using an Anita's but any yellow will work in any brand so if you've caught other videos you've probably heard me say that brand of paint does not matter do not get hung up on having exactly the same color or brand that I have um, every brand of paint has so many colors to choose from and so really what you're looking for is just a light blue, a bright purpley pink, um, a yellow, um, so don't get hung up on that. You can definitely find these colors in, in all brands. And make it your own, choose your own colors as well. If you want to have more purpley uh, flowers, you could introduce some different purple colors. If you wanted some blue flowers in there, um, you could do that too. So there are no rules. This is your painting and it's your way. I'm just a guide. Okay. So, 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 let me just make sure I'm not missing any questions so far. Okay. Let's get into it. Oh, brushes. I'm just going to be using a large flat for my background and then just a couple different rounds. Probably a, a larger round, a medium, and probably a couple smalls and a lino brush. We're going to start with this large flat and we're going to get our background in. So we're going to start with um, a lot of white. Okay, and then I've got the blue that I'm going to mix in with that to get this really nice light, light blue sky. Try to keep this right next to it so you guys can see. And you got my palette. Okay, so large flat brush is going to really help us get that background in fairly quickly so we're not wasting time with just maybe a smaller brush. This allows us to hold a lot of paint and really work quickly with some blending techniques. So I'm going to load it up with a bunch of white and you want to make sure that you have enough paint on your brush because then you're able to push that paint around a lot easier. Um, if you kind of just barely dip it in there and you don't get it filled up with paint, you're going to end up working in just small areas. It's going to dry out faster. You're not going to be able to blend easy. So really make sure that you get enough paint on there. You don't want it to be able to drip off, but this thing can hold a lot. So make sure to load it up. All right, so I've got a bunch of white on there and then I'm going to just dip it in that blue. And I'm going to come out on my... Uh, surface here and just do a bunch of X's crisscrosses and lightly blend so I've got it um, I've got this blue blend and the you've got some white areas here which is really what we're going for we want to have um, some different shades come through with that so we don't want to over blend keep this process really light and fast. If we keep working and working an area, what's going to happen is, is we're just going to get a solid blue color. So fast, light, easy blends. 
the more blue you put on your brush, the more blue your background is. If you want to lighten it up, you're just going to use less blue. If an area gets to be too dark, it's got too much blue in it, just at, grab a little bit of white and lighten it up. Keep your brush strokes random so you don't have any sort of pattern. Crisscrosses. Light, fast. So you see how I'm able, because I really load my brush up, I'm able to work with a large section of my painting as opposed to if I didn't have enough paint on there, I could just do maybe little squares here and there and I'd get really frustrated because my paint would dry, I wouldn't get these really great blends that are happening. Um, so really make sure that you have enough paint on your brush which can be a little bit scary to start if you're just starting out painting. Um, you know, you might be like, oh, I don't want to get too much paint and have, you know, a globby mess, but trust me. You know, if you, if you start to see um, globs of paint on your paper, then you can always just go back and grab them and pick them up and move them to another section. Um, but it does take practice to figure out what the right amount of paint on your brush is. So that's it. That's our background. You can see how I've got these really great areas where I have a little bit more white here. I've got some more white here. And because we're trying to portray a cloud, in, or not a cloud, a sky in the background, we've got these really great areas that look like blurred clouds far away and it's got this really just great texture. Okay. All right. The other thing I want to point out is I was not super careful about staying in the lines. I took my brush strokes right over the lines where my sheep is and also where the flowers are going to be. Because this is the first layer, I know I'm coming back over the top of that and I can clean that up. That just allows me a little more freedom to be a little more quick in my brush strokes. So keep that in mind as well. You do not have to try and stay in the lines. Okay. So the next step then is to put our sheep in. So I'm going to get that black out. I'm going to get just a small amount of this territorial beige. Gonna help us tone down the, that sheep's um, face a little bit, so it's not just a stark black. Okay, and I'm gonna get a new pile of white because I have got a bunch of blue in that, and I don't want to have my sheep be blue. Okay, I'm gonna stick with my large flat. For this again because I'm able to then put a bunch of paint down a little bit faster with this brush another thing I want to mention to you guys is you don't have to copy what or use the brush that I'm using use whatever's comfortable for you brushes are a very personal um, tool as you paint more as you get comfortable with brushes you're gonna have your own favorite brushes and so again there are no rules. Use what's comfortable for you. Um, you do you. I'm just a guide. I'm going to guide you. Maybe this is your first time. Use that big flat one. If you're more comfortable with a larger round, use that too. So, whatever is most comfortable for you. Okay, so. For the black, we're going to fill in this great little face here. It's just a U shape. And then we've got these little U shaped ears on the side. So I'm going to start with that. Getting black on my brush. And 
his face, he's kind of tilted to the side here. in his ears while I'm at it. I have a little ear there and one over here. Okay. And then I'm going to put that in water and switch to a large round. Because of what I'm going to do next is start adding some highlights to this so it's not so flat. We don't want to just have a black face. We want to show some different variation of color in that to give them some dimension. So I'm going to start by creating just a gray. I've got some white off to the side and a little bit of black. Maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to just create a dark gray here. Maybe a medium gray. What I'm going to do is just drag some of that color around the edges and then maybe down the center a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some and add that to the tops of his ears to give him some dimension there. And then I'm going to grab, I'm not going to wash my brush, just grab a little bit of that territorial beige and streak some of that brown in there. Go on both sides of the face and then just a little streak on the ear there. It's not a lot. And if you get it too light or it's um, too white or too much brown, you can always just go back with that black. Grab a little black on your brush and just blend that in a little bit. So we're just adding some streaks to his face. Okay. Hi Jody. You'll be painting later today. Awesome. Make sure to share. Okay, so I'm going to give my brush a quick wash. And I'm going to continue using this um, round here, my large round. I'm going to start with that black. And I'm going to create the outline for this little guy's body. And I want to make sure that I get some wiggle in there. I'm creating this movement in his body. So I'm using these uh, wiggly brush strokes. You can see there's that wiggle on all of the edges here. So I'm going to start at the top and just kind of start wiggling that down. And we might lose some of that when we start layering in some color. But we're going to start with this. This is going to give us our starting point. All right, so let's go grab a bunch of more, a bunch of white. We're gonna put it off to the side. We're gonna mix some black in it. Black is a really strong, potent color, so you don't need a lot. Always start with a small amount and then work your way up because it will turn a color super dark, super fast. So I've got this gray going on here. I'm just gonna add a little more black to it, get it a little darker, there we go. Okay, so what I'm doing next is I'm gonna come in from the sides and I'm gonna work my way into the center of the body. And I'm gonna start with that dark gray and then just slowly add white to my brush. So as we get closer in, we've got this gradient happening. So the, the outside is darker that's where we're creating that shadow and then we're going to start adding white to it and getting a lighter gray as we go so again I'm going to do the same thing just go right over that black and you might cover it up that's okay I'm just going to get that dark gray in there to start with 
painting is all about layers and every layer is going to add a little bit more beauty to your painting. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of white to our brush. We're going to come in and start bringing our brush strokes in from each side. And again, go right over your previous brush strokes. It might blend a little bit, but that's okay. It's what we want. Just going to keep coming in, doing different squiggles. Maybe there's more squiggle in one area, less in the other. Try and keep it random. So I'm just adding white to my brush now. I'm not adding any more of that gray. I'm just dipping it straight in the white. And because I still have gray on my brush, I'm actually just kind of creating right on my paper lighter shades without having to mix anything on my palette. already is looking so fluffy and cute. Okay, so I'm going to go back and just add maybe a few little bits of white on the side here. And you can do small little squiggles right over, just creating some fun little fluffy flur fur bits. And that's it. So if at any point your area got a little too dark or too light, you can just let it dry and then come back in and either lighten it up with more white or darken it with just a little more gray um, and re-blend that in. But how cute is this little fluff ball? All right, so let's let this dry and let's go work on the flowers. So for my flowers, I am using a Razzleberry, which is kind of like a purpley pink, super bright. Um, and then I've kind of got a lighter pink that I'm going to use to highlight with. Something very similar though. I've got a coral color. And yellow. So my flowers today that I'm going to show you are very abstract flowers. They're essentially little blobs of paint with squiggles inside of them. Um, let me just bring this up closer. So you can see I start with just a base color and then I come in with the second color and I'm just kind of squiggling it or I'm doing a parenthesis or a um, backwards parenthesis on those. They are very, very abstract. So let's start with um, our center flower here. Choose whatever color you want. I'm just going to grab this coral. I did switch to a medium round at this point. I have a little bit more control in this smaller area here. What I'm going to do is just create kind of a blobby circle with some little arches off of it. Okay, so I've got one flower there. We'll put a second one down here. And we'll put one off to the side right here. We'll do a quick little wash. 
So we're gonna put our first coat down on all of our flowers. I'm gonna grab this really dark pink, kind of it's a purpley color, kind of got a little purpley tint to it. And we'll put one right here. And we'll do one up here. Just a messy circle. And go ahead and let them overlap and cover another flower. Because some flowers are going to be behind others, so some of those petals might, um, you know, overlap, and that's okay. And then let's put one right here. We'll do a quick little wash and we will put our yellow flowers in. I've got kind of a larger yellow here and you also want to make sure that some of your flowers are different sizes. You got some one or two large ones, a few medium and then a few small. And we'll do another yellow up here. little wash. Alright, so now let's go back to our coral flowers. If you noticed, I did go right over my center flower with some of these petals, but I really want that coral flower to come forward and be my center flower. So I'm going to actually go over those petals and bring it forward again with the second layer. So I'm going to load my brush up with this coral and just put a second coat real quick on that and push it to the front a little bit, covering up some of those other petals or other flowers. All right, so then the next step is to kind of decide where I want my center. And to do that, I'm going to dip my brush into that yellow. So I've got both colors on my brush. And for some of your flowers, it's okay. But on other flowers, you might want to move them around. Since this is my center flower, it's kind of my focal point, I am going to just put it right dab in the middle. So I'm going to just drop that yellow and kind of push it around. Not too big, just a little oval shape. Maybe it's a circle. Just drop it and kind of push that paint. It's going to blend a little bit with that coral color um, to create kind of a new color, and that's okay too. So then the next step is we're going to create some petals. I'm going to go back to my coral and then I'm going to dip my brush into a white. And from that center point, I'm going to create these half circles or arches um, or a smiley face, a parenthesis shape. And we're going to just kind of work our way and come out from that center. So we're going to start in the center and I've got just a little arch parenthesis there. I'm going to do one on the other side. And then I'm going to offset and come in there a little bit further out on the other side. I've got both colors so I'm kind of getting this blended light coral color happening. Some of it's a bright white, some of it's going to be a blend of those two colors which is what makes these flowers so fun. And that's it. Oh, Sarah's, let's see, what is she saying? She's got to go. Happy Easter, happy Easter to you, Sarah. I hope you get a chance to paint it later um, and would love to see your take on this. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with our other coral, other coral flowers while we have them here. I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow. I'm going to drop it in the center. Now, for this flower here, I'm going to put my center kind of closer to the bottom. So it's almost like it's pointing downward and we're seeing that center and more of that upper part of the flower. So I'm going to grab some white and so because I've got it towards that center, 
this bottom section here is only going to show one petal. I've got one swipe there, and then I'm going to build my petals coming up. Okay, let's do that with the other, and we will put our center there. Let's go grab some white. What's nice about these flowers as well, because they're kind of abstract, you can really just start playing with your colors. You can use white to create your petals. You can use another pink. You could use, um, you know, uh, you could use any of these combinations of pink um, on top of each other, blended with each other to get these really great petals as well. Um, Typically, I choose a base color and then I add white to it to create the light tones in it. But you could definitely, and maybe I'll do it with this, I'll do it with this purpley one here next. I'll use that pink that I have to highlight my petals with. And you could add yellow in with that coral. That would be pretty as the petals too, and that would give you a cool blended um, look as well. Okay, so first thing we are going to load up with our main color on our brush and I'm going to put my second coat in. Now this time I am being careful about not covering this petal here because I do want that to look like it's sitting up over my flower here. So I'm being careful to just work my way around that. All right, so my center, I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow and place that somewhere in my flower. And then I'm going to grab this other pink here and use that to create my petals here. And it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to grab a little bit of white and we'll just add a little bit of some accent. As it dries, you'll start to see those two pinks kind of stand out from each other. Um, but right now, because it's wet, it's really hard to see the difference in those. So let's go work on the other one. We're going to go back to our main color. We'll put our base coat in. Okay, we're going to grab just a little bit of that yellow on the tip of our brush. We're going to drop it in where we want our center. And then I'm going to grab that second pink. It's a lighter pink, and it's actually so close in color. I might try and lighten it up a little bit here. Let's go grab some white. And just lighten it up so we get this really great contrast happening. back to that other flower and add just a little bit of that pink into it there. Come back to this one, do a couple little parentheses shapes, start in your center and then work your way out. They're just going to be really small little brush strokes um, up in there. Let's grab a little bit of white for some highlights. go back to our main color to do our last flower. I'm going to drop a little bit in there with that. Grab a yellow. Drop a yellow. I'm going to come grab some of this lighter pink and just do little brush strokes. Now if your flowers are really small it might be beneficial to grab a smaller brush a smaller round might give you a little bit more control over those brush strokes inside there. Even a liner brush would help. Okay, there we go. Those are our pink flowers. Let's go work on our yellow. Do a quick little wash. load up with that yellow and 
put a second coat down just to get a nice base. And for the pink flowers, I'm going to use this dark purple or this dark pink as my center. So I'm going to grab just a small amount on the very tip of my brush and drop that in the center there. Kind of wipe off any excess there. And then I'm going to go grab some white and use white to create my petals. And there was a little bit of pink left in my brush, which made this really kind of cool yellowy coral color happen. It's kind of hard to see on screen, but I'll show you when we're done how that flower turned out. Okay, we're gonna go back to the yellow, lay down our second coat on our flower there, grab a little bit of that pink, Okay, just a very small amount. If you've got too much, just um, wash your brush before the next step or you'll just get kind of pink petals, um, which would be cute too. And we're gonna go dip it in that white and create those parentheses around our center. Okay, let's go back, grab some more yellow. We'll do our last flower here. I'm gonna grab just a titch of that pink. We're gonna drop it where we want our center. Go grab some white and put our petals in. And that is it for our flowers. We're gonna add some black to them to help pull out a little bit of some definition in there, but that is um, our abstract flower crown. Okay, so I'm going to switch now to my small round and let's grab some green to put our leaves in. So uh, is anyone traveling this weekend for the holiday? Going to see family, staying home. Dinner plans. We are actually taking our camper and headed to Billings, which is about a four hour drive for us. And we are going to spend our Easter weekend at a KOA. So last night my husband went and got our camper out of storage and brought it home. And it was just kind of an exciting time. I love camping, but um, I've always loved camping. But we got a camper um, a couple years ago, and it is probably my favorite thing. I just love to even sit in it when it's just in my driveway. <laughs> okay, so what I've done here, I got to talking and not explaining. Um, I'm just adding a couple flowers, all or not flowers. Um, adding some leaves around all the edges here. And my leaves are just two parentheses right next to each other. Let me show you in a larger, closer view here. So what I do for my leaves is I create a parenthesis, another one right next to it, and then I just fill it in. And that's it. We have abstract flowers. We, um, it's okay to have some funky shaped leaves as well. Just the, um, some fun shapes there. So I'm kind of just sticking them in a little bit. So this might be a half leaf. I've got two here that I've kind of stacked on top of each other. I've got two up here 
So just play around with it. Wherever you feel like you just need a little something, depending on how your flowers go, you might just need one or two, or you might need to fill in a spot in a, with a leaf somewhere. Let's just put a second one right here, just a little guy. Okay, so that's it for our leaves. We can go ahead and wash our brush. And then the next step that I'm gonna do, while we wait for everything to dry here so that we can come back in with some detail is, this little guy's dancing. We're gonna add some lines around him to make him look like he's moving. And then while he's dancing, some of this, the petals maybe fly out in the air. We've got just this fun little stream of color that's coming up there. So I'm going to use my small round for that and just kind of work through all my colors, right? So I've got this coral and I'm just going to just do a little drop of my brush, just this little shape here. They're all going to be different. I'm just kind of stamping some color out here. The harder you press, the bigger the shape. Your brush is getting depressed a little bit more, and that's okay too. And then just do a light press for a smaller shape. Okay, so we did the coral. And we can come in and grab this dark pink. Add that in. Okay. Quick little wash. We're going to grab the yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the green and do a couple green. And then I'm going to do a little bit of white. All right, so while I have the white on my brush, I'm gonna cre create just some highlights on his face. I wanna create just a streak down the middle of his nose here for the um, his snout, I guess. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of white on the tops of his ears for some highlights there. And then I'm going to add just a streak of white into some of my leaves for a little bit of some highlight on those as well. And then depending on how your um, fur went, you could work on adding a little bit of highlights there if it got too dark or if you wanted to lighten it up or Maybe it's too light, you want to darken it up, you could do that too at this time. But I think mine's okay. It's a little darker than my original, but I'm liking it. Um, he definitely looks a little bigger and a little fluffier than this guy, but it's okay. He's just as cute. Okay. Then the last step here is for our liner brush. So we're gonna get our smallest round that you have and I'm gonna get some fresh black out and we're gonna start adding some squiggles around his body and some defining lines in the um, flowers. Okay. So to start with, let's just work around the body adding some squiggles. I'm going to start here at his little shoulder and just kind of squiggle around the outside here. Just gives us that um, feeling of movement when he's dancing. Then I'm going to also do a couple lines around his face and even around his face in the uh, fur here. Again, makes it look like maybe his face is even moving back and forth. We'll go around the ears there, 
We have a little movement around the ear. And you could do squiggles or straight. So in this one, I'm kind of squiggling my lines. In this one, I did a little bit of straight lines, so you can kind of see the difference on how that gives the painting a different kind of movement look. And then I'm going to also just kind of come around some of the leaves a little bit, maybe around a flower or two. Okay. And then I'm going to just add a couple little swipes of black inside my flowers. So just another set of half circles, parentheses, and what we're doing here is just kind of helping define these flowers just a little bit more. So when you're doing outlining like this, you want to have your smallest brush possible, but also make sure that you're using a very light pressure, almost holding that brush and it's just barely touching your painting. That way you can get a really nice thin line. And there we go. That is our uh, dancing sheet painting. What do you guys think? Don't forget to sign your work. And if you paint, um, if you paint this, I would love for you to share this. You can share this in the event discussions. You can share this on Redbird. Uh, design page you can send me a message if you just want to keep it for my eyes only um, however you want but I do encourage you to share because it really just helps you build confidence and once you get confident in your painting the more you want to paint and that is always a good thing so I'm going to Peel away the paint and I'm going to lift it up so you can see some a little bit more detail on those flowers and see um, really how those just those parentheses shapes really help define those but keeps them abstract. And his dancing little furs just shaking. And just to show you how when you paint things multiple times, you're going to see different things, you're going to do different things, um, and you always come up with something different. So here's my original. It's got kind of a lighter background, the lighter fur, and then there's this guy. He's got kind of a darker background um, and the darker fur. So um, it's always fun to paint things a couple times. That's where a mixed media pad comes in great. It allows you the freedom to paint things once or twice and kind of see how it changes as you uh, paint things a second time. Things always change. Julie loved this guy. He's so cute. I know. I think he's the cutest. Let's see what else. Well, I would love to see yours, Julie, when you get uh, finished and it dries. Um, post a picture and let us see your art. Okay, so that was today's fun and free. Um, if you want to paint along, if you're catching this on the replay or you're just joining us, um, the link for the free supply list and download or tracer um, is in the comments takes you to my website you uh, click on the sheep it will ask you for your email and then my website will email you a zip file with the files that you need to create your own I encourage you to share your work with us um, let us encourage you and help you build confidence so you're more apt to create more art, which is my goal for you is to create art and benefit from the healing that comes with 
painting. So with that, I will let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you guys have a great Easter weekend with friends, family. Um, it's supposed to be 70, knock on wood, but hopefully some nice weather too. So I will chat with you guys later. We do have one scheduled for next Thursday. I don't know what it is quite yet, but it will be posted soon. So look forward to painting with you guys again. Take care and thanks a lot. Bye.